The Romanian Front Romanian, Frontal Romanesque, FR, was a moderate fascist party created in Romania in 1935. Led by former Prime Minister Alexandru Vita Vovod, it originated as a right-wing splinter group from the mainstream National Peasants' Party While in power, Vita had an ambiguous approach to the Iron Guard, and constructed his own radical ideology. The FR had a generally xenophobic program of positive discrimination, being implicitly and eventually explicitly anti-Semitic. It was subsumed to the policies of King Carol II, maneuvering between the mainstream national liberals, the Pians left wing, and the more radically fascist Gardists. Vida tried to compete with the former two and appease the latter, assuming fascist trappings such as the black-shirted uniform. Albeit invested with the King's trust and counting experienced politicians among its cadres, the FR was always a minor force in Romanian politics, and was habitually defeated in by-elections. Early on, it was courted by other groups, narrowly failing to absorb the National Agrarian Party. It came to depend on the more powerful National Christian Party, with which it formed a political alliance in 1935. Called National Bloc, it too failed to produce a full merger between its components, as Vita had qualms about the unchecked Germanophilia of his partners. In later years, the FR made several sustained efforts to reunite with, or to absorb, the centrist wing of the Pient. The FR's hostility towards successive national liberal governments gave way to cooperation after the latter also embraced ethnic discrimination. This rapprochement eventually resulted in a cartel, formed by the two parties during the 1937 election. This controversial move bled the FR of members and supporters, leaving it to be absorbed into the single-party National Renaissance Front in 1938. From 1940, Vida served as the Front's chairman. History Topic <inaudible> Origins The front had its roots in the second and third governments of Vita Vovod 1932 and 1933 which were characterized by growing levels of antisemitism and discussions regarding the possibility of barring Jews from a number of public posts Jewish quotas as an ideologue, Vita Vovod found inspiration in the work of economic antisemites and authoritarians such as Karl Luger and Oral Popovici. In the late 1920s, his views were shaped by eugenics and biopolitics, leading him to demand the state-managed preservation of a pure peasant stock, against biological competition. The anti-Semitic measures were taken to the background of agitation by another homegrown fascist movement, the Iron Guard, which Vita Vovod had initially protected and supported in his term as interior minister. Specifically against the Guard and other violent organizations, Vita Vovod passed laws limiting political freedoms and establishing curfews although he allowed the Transylvanian Saxons to form Sturmabteilung units which targeted Jews. Vita was in turn attacked by the Guardist press as a Freemason. Even though, Vida claimed, his attachment to the lodge was purely formal and instrumental. Another accusation brought up against Vida was his partnership in Jewish-owned businesses, in particular the Marmarash Blank Bank. Rival politicians such as Armand Kalinescu and Victor Moldovan regarded Vida as a man who secretly cultivated the guard and refrained from intensifying persecution. By that moment, Vida had emerged as the leader of a distinct, radical right, faction of the Pient. He backed the increasingly authoritarian King Carol II, while the moderates, under Yuliu Maniu, supported liberal democracy, calling the right wing, extra constitutional. For his part, Vida wanted the group purged of remnants from the old Peasants' Party. Writing at the time, the left wing radical journalist Petra Constantinescu Iasi claimed that the conflict also reflected differences in global orientation, Mania's Francophile support base against Vida's Anglo Germanophilia. The latter, he proposed, was aiming for the complete, vigorous and definitive, fascization of Romania. However, Vida viewed himself as a moderate Francophile, merely critical of his country's subservience to France. He also rejected the League of Nations as a spawn of the Jews. Overall, he declared his sympathy for Andre Tardieu and his French conservatism. By November 1933, the two wings of the Pient were fighting each other out in the open, notably so at a riot in Sibiu. The king openly encouraged such dissent, hoping to weaken his rivals, but also finding that Vita Vovod's politics were largely compatible with his own. 
Nevertheless, the government found it hard to tackle the effects of the Great Depression, and was brutal in its handling of the Gravita workers' strike. The growing rift inside the government party, but also evidence of the Prime Minister's complicity with the Guard, caused additional dissatisfaction among sections of the electorate. The cabinet ultimately fell when the Pients left-wing published a pamphlet against the king, which the latter used as a pretext for demanding Vita Vovod's resignation, the National Liberal Party PNL, imposing itself on the king with the threat of «civic resistance», was returned to power, and Gheorghe Tătărescu became prime minister. In late 1933, Tătărescu was replaced with PNL colleague Ion G. Duca, who organized a clampdown against the guard and was assassinated by one of its death squads. In the wake of the killing, Vita Vovod spoke favorably of Iron Guard men who were on trial for sedition. Tatarescu returned at the helm of a new cabinet, despite Vita's hopes that the king would prefer an alliance of the far-right parties, including his own faction. Emergence <inaudible> 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 Vita's dissidence was immediately useful for the king, it absorbed Mania's attention and toned down Pient attempts to restore the constitutional order. According to historian Petra Turli, Vita was "...supported by the king, though not as much as he would have liked." Increasingly marginalized by his party colleagues, in January 1934 Vita announced that he would not resign, but "...waited to be thrown out." He also threatened that his ouster would come with "...fireworks." His lead was followed by Vioral Tilia and Eduard Mirto, both of whom attacked Maniu in private conversations of public speeches. During February, the various Pient factions made a final attempt at reconciliation, with their leaders meeting at Bistrita. Over the following months, Vida tested Mania's resolve by instigating another conflict in Timis Toronto County. Supported by the Pient newspaper Terra, he fought for the local party presidency against Mania's favorite, Sever Bocu. Vida was able to win the seat in June, but, at a September summit in Sovata, the Pient decided to depose him. Attempting to regain control of the electoral base, Vida took up radicalism in the social sphere as well, promising peasants that he would bring about a new land reform. These policies got him expelled from the Pient in early 1935, leaving that party to be controlled by left-wing agrarianists, the xenophobic and anti-democratic, anti-Semitic radical right-wing. Romanian Front was born from this split. It began to function in April 1935 officially, on March 12, declaring itself ready to serve the king's wishes, and counting on support from traditional Pient voters to become the catch-all far-right group. By mid-March, when his speech at Oradia drew in an immense attendance, Vita Vovod had organized separate Vitaist sections in 60 counties. The split exasperated other Pient wings, and resulted in more clashes. The National Peasantist Paramilitary Guard, or Voinici, staged an attack on Vita's newspaper, Gazeta Transylvaniae. By 1937, the Front had set up another Transylvanian newspaper, called Offensiva Romana and published from Cluj. Vitists took over the Pient newspaper of Constanza, Aurora de Broge, and founded their own regional organs, Basarabia Crestina Chisinau, Biruinta Botosani, and Kemeria Noastra Ismail. At Piatra Nemt, N. Bors put out the affiliate paper Frontal Romanesque Nemt. The new party included Vita's two sons, Oral and Mircea, alongside Tilia, Severdan, Virgil Patarka, and Voisu Nitescu. Gheorghe Miranescu, himself a former Pient Prime Minister, became a founding member on March 15, 1935, when he published an open letter supporting Vita. The Pient then shunned him as an enemy of peasant democracy. A while after, the FR registered in its ranks a prominent PNL defector, Constantine Angelescu. A wave of disgruntled Pient cadres also signed up for the FR, including Mirto, Oral Vlad, Dr. Ioannitescu, and Gheorghe Ionescu Sisesti. The Oresti chapter, organized by Vlad, included the nationalist priest Ioan Moda. Other Pient colleagues from Vita's native Transylvania also joined the FR. Major figures include Emil Hadiganu, Dionysi Roman, Gavril Iuga, and Teodor Bohasiel. The Front's branch in Brasov County, supervised by Nitescu, also had Valeriu Braniste among its members. On April 20, the FR established its own group in the lower chamber. On that day, five deputies of the Peasants' Party Lupu, including Ioan Madrianu of Sums, Mihai Isakescu of Constanza, and Alex. D. Rada of Cetadia Alba, affiliated with Vedism, 
Other members of note were Savian Batalescu, former mayor of Bucharest, Coriolan Balta, Ion Buzjugan, Romulus Candea, and Ioan Gr. Periatianu. The front section in DOLJ was established by a former Pient deputy, Nicolae C. Yovapale. The FR was soon joined by professors such as George Moroyanu and Mihai Serban, and had an active cell at the University of Iasi, under Petra Dragomirescu. Overall, in the academic world, some ten professionals rallied with the FR. This was ahead of the guard, but well below other parties on the right. Vedism and Fascism The Front's spokesman, Ioan Alexandru Bran Lemony, declared the party to be pragmatic rather than ideological, noting that it did not deal in abstraction, and that Mania's belief in the peasant state was a hybrid, unworkable construct. One of the main points of FR policy was Vita Vovod's idea of minority quotas, which he termed the numerous Velachicus, the share in economy and culture, in proportion to the Romanians' ethnic number. The party program called for establishing a really biologically national state, the national organic state, which must be a constitutional monarchy, with the abolition of all class war. Vida claimed that he was merely fulfilling his old agenda, arguing that, in places such as the Banat Romanians could only find employment doing menial labor. According to calculations by the Front's press, Jews and Hungarians were overrepresented in the liquor business, noting that, although Romanians made up a majority of retailers, their suppliers were still largely non-Romanian. Proclaiming that, "...capital and labor must be subservient to the superior object of the nation." The party proposed, "...the selection of the best elements among the children of the race," to take place within the school system. The program also emphasized that, there must be no policy of hatred towards the minorities. Adding, an end must be put to the privileged situation resulting from the past. Numerous Velachicus replicated Gardas tactics, but did so in a positive discrimination manner, one not ostensibly anti Semitic. Within the FR itself, Patarka objected to Vida's ideas on the matter, viewing them as exaggerated. When bar associations began voting their own Romanianization, the FR's Yovapale criticized a complete purge, proposing that up to 4% of the legal practices could still go to non-Romanians. As noted at the time by Vita's rival, Constantine Argatoanu, the issue of enforced discrimination was paradoxical, since minorities were largely absent from the state apparatus, introducing quotas would have meant, "...opening up such careers to a significant number of Jews." That practical matter did not dissuade the "...scoundrels of our cities." the Jew eaters and extollers of racism." From campaigning around the concept, overall, radical antisemites were reserved about the proposal. The Iron Guard's captain, Cornelia Zalia Kodrianu, wrote that, "...if Vida was ever antisemitic, he was one of the old school." During that interval, the Guard's intellectuals also gave mixed reactions to the FR's antisemitic program. Sociologist Tryon Brailianu cautiously commended the FR for wanting to break away from Kika imperialism and Kika finance, while philosopher Ne Ionescu referred to the numerous Velachicus as a platform for agitation, not at all a political program. The FR is often assumed to have been insincere or vague about its political radicalism. Analysts have dubbed it a semi fascist or pro fascist. Party, one undecided about whether to support a fully fledged dictatorship or a milder, national democracy. The group was otherwise compatible with the Iron Guard, both were seen by Guard sympathizer Petra Tutia as exponents of the revolutionary right, destined to blend together into a single party or a state party. As noted by his colleague Mihail Sebastian, Ionescu took part in agitating for Vida, and argued that the Front's alliance with the Guard and their common victory over Tatarescu were still inevitable. Monarchist writer Ion San Giorgio claimed that Ionescu was sponsoring the FR with money that ultimately originated in Nazi Germany, and actively trying to create tensions between Vida and Carol. Allegedly, Ionescu also intervened to save the FR's Mirto when the latter was found to be running a smuggling business. Vida, who declared publicly that he had in him a spark from Hitler's soul, imitated Italian fascism, Nazism, and the Guard itself at a primarily visual and declarative level. 
The FR had a command structure that led from the authoritarian party leader to the low-ranking members recruited into watches, centurii, and legions, and a political uniform consisting of black shirts. From June 1935, the Front's chapter in Constanza County also had a youth paramilitary wing, called Pandery in honor of the Wallachian rebels. Bran Lemony acknowledged that his group disapproved of some methods employed by German National Socialism, but challenged his adversaries to note that fascism and Nazism were more economically efficient. The party program dictated that elections were the cause of Romania's political problems, and therefore operated on the authoritative criterion, including the nomination of the party elite by the supreme leader. The cadres were only entrusted with deepening the penetration of the ideology among the masses. Vida also stated his radical anti-communism which, as historian Armin Heinen writes, "...clashed bizarrely with the actual insignificance of the Communist Party." Communists such as Constantinescu Iasi reciprocated the sentiment, calling the FR part of the "...black warmongers bloc," and of "...the fascist peril." The FR was also castigated by the left-wing essayist Constantine Prisnia, who argued that Gurdism and Vedism were duping the youth with ideology, which is nothing other than the very demolition of Romanian cultural values." By contrast, lawyer Mircea Lepidotescu, who was a leading FR cadre in DOLJ, maintained contacts with Marxist study circles and defended communist Anna Pocher during her 1936 trial at Craiova. Nationalist bloc Despite official backing and circumstantial supporters, the Front failed to prosper, and was always a frail party. As noted by Heinen, within just a few weeks, it became clear that Vida could not fulfill the hopes invested in him by the king. On May 15, 1935, an FR meeting at Vox Hall in Bucharest gathered some 5,000 spectators, though, reportedly, many of them were delegated by the Iron Guard. The first electoral test was a by-election in Prahova, where the FR only managed 6,000 votes, well below the PNL and Pient. In the June by-elections for the Senate seat at Mehadinti, Vida himself obtained less than 3,000 votes. One contributing factor was that Premier Tatarescu himself introduced some laws implicitly aimed against the Jewish community, whilst also seeking to deliberately contain the FR and other radical groups. The FR could still boast a strong presence in Gardist dominated regions such as Kampalung Moldovanesk, where its senator, Dimitru Tinu, ran a successful consumer cooperative. In early 1935, Vida was interested in toning down the perception of his party as a Carlist puppet. For this reason, he negotiated a rapprochement with the anti carol Constitutional Front, formed by Gheorghe Bratianu and Alexandru Avarescu. Reportedly, in April 1935 Vida had asked that the king's influential mistress, Elena Lupescu, be forced into exile, although his colleague Mirto was still widely perceived as a member of Lupescu's Camarilla. The National Agrarian Party PNA, headed by Vida's old rival Octavian Goga, also approached the front with offers of alliance or merger. Reportedly, Goga offered to fuse his group into the FR, only demanding the position of vice president. Vida refused, since he had promised that role to Vlad. The FR's wish to create a strong nationalist pole also drove it into negotiations with Carlist supporters on the extreme right. Its first partners were the anti Semitic National Christian Defense League, Lance, in particular its youth wing, and a more minor Iron Guard splinter group, the Crusade of Romanianism. However, the FR and the Lance were irreconcilable over Vita's numerous Vlachicus doctrines. The League's senior president, A. C. Cusa, wrote at the time that Vita's system of quotas, instead of signifying the defense of Romanian elements, will bring about the complete extinction of our ideal Romania for the Romanians. Around August 1935, the Front was reportedly negotiating a merger with Ion v. Emilian's fire swastika, which had broken out of the Lance. Vita's anti-Semitic ideology also won him the endorsement of the Romanian National Socialists, who were led by Stefan Tatarescu, brother of the Premier. Clashes with the Pient were still reported during that interval. In October 1935, the Seaget home of a Vitist was reportedly attacked by a Pient crew under Ili Lazar. Shots were fired during the scuffle, leaving Lazar wounded in the arm. 
By then, the FR was negotiating an alliance with the more powerful National Christian Party PNC, which had resulted, with Carroll's blessing, from the LANC's merger with the PNA. Together, the PNC and the FR established a nationalist bloc, the second largest coalition in parliament after the PNLs. The PNC leader, Goga, welcomed Vida as a fellow combatant, for the national cause. Nevertheless, the alliance saw PNC activists such as Nichifor Kranich, whose radical ethnocratic program was rejected by Vita Vovod, leaving in protest. By November 1935, Maniu and the Pient had grown fearful of this rapprochement, noting that it could produce an electoral sweep by the right. The FR soon began merger talks with the PNC, but these exposed other fundamental disagreements between the two sides. Reportedly, Vida was upset by the PNC's foreign policy, which openly celebrated revanchism and German re armament. Carroll was enthusiastic about the promised merger, which he hoped would give him a strong party of the right to control. In early January 1936, Vida announced that the merger was no longer being sought, and also that the FR would not field candidates in any partial elections scheduled for that year. Demoralized by what he saw as Carroll's machinations, he declared his intention to withdraw from politics. Despite renewed efforts by the king, a complete merger between the two parties again failed to materialize, and, to the Guard's stated satisfaction, both the PNC and the FR experienced major internal dissension. At that stage, the FR moved closer to the Guard. Vida was a guest of honor at the Guard Student Congress, held at Targu Muresh in March. During May, Vida and Miranescu had private meetings with the Guard, hoping to persuade its leaders to renounce extreme violence. Contrarily, in his interviews with Carroll, Vida voiced his praise toward the Guard, while shunning the PNC. He and Carroll agreed that the Guardists needed to be coaxed and kept away from reaching an understanding with Maniu. Topic: 1937 elections. A reshuffled Tatarescu government took over in mid-1936. According to the regional journal Viata Ardialului, summer 1936 was a period of stagnation for the FR and the nationalist current as a whole. The front was still sure of its destiny, but organizing in depth and keeping secret about it. During the following months, Vida and Angelescu advanced the notion of a PNT FR reconciliation, arguing that it could successfully bring down the PNL cabinet. One other option, advanced by Carroll and journalist Pamphil Saikaru, was for the FR to join efforts with the hard left Radical Peasants Party. For its part, the FR continued to highlight his appreciation for Nazism. In June 1936, following the Rhineland Crisis, La Humanite reported that the racist parties the Front, the Iron Guard and the PNC staged a march outside the French embassy in Bucharest, with chants of Long live Hitler! Speaking at Oradia in October, Vida saluted both Axis powers. According to Vida, the Locarno treaties were naturally obsolete, and Germany was right to ignore them. However, he cautioned that Romania needed to obtain reassurances of territorial integrity from both Germany and France. On September 8, the FR and PNC had agreed on another collaboration, and presented a single list for the local elections of that year. Over the following months, the FR was effectively marginalized. In March 1937, Tatarescu banned the FR's black insignia and uniforms, alongside those of other paramilitary movements, including the Guard and the PNC. The front continued to be identified by its main electoral logo, two concentric circles with a single dot at the center, under which it ran in the local elections of June. Called target or wheel. In party documents, it symbolized Greater Romania as an outside circle, and, within, the belt strap tightening around the black dot, namely the xenophile. According to Gazeta Transylvaniae, this symbol was poorly understood by illiterate sympathizers, who mistakenly voted with the Pient Circle, which had been intensely popularized by Ioannitescu before his defection. Early 1937 saw rumors of a tentative cooperation between Vida and the Pient, which was then chaired by Ion Mihilache. According to various outlets, Vida had ordered his propagandists to only focus criticism on Maniu, while Tilia mediated between the two parties. Later that year, the two camps were still irreconcilable. The Pient boasted several victories in the local elections of June. The National Peasantist Press noted that victory came despite a conspiracy between government and right-wing parties. 
PNC and FR, and despite an unhinged propaganda campaign mounted by the extreme right, united under the vitest sign. The FR managed to come second in ILFOV County, with 13,505 of the votes cast. With the Piant ready to assume power, but waiting on the royal prerogative, Carroll II ordered it to accept Vita Vovod at internal affairs. He knew that this request would be ignored, and only hoped to create more rifts between the two currents within the Piant. Carroll also pressed on for a cute merger between the two parties, arguing that both Vita and Miranescu were essentially peasantists in their outlook. This intervention renewed the tensions within that group. Armand Kalinescu, who had served under Vida and was close to the king, criticized the party leadership for not sealing a deal with the FR. The deal was accepted in October 1937 by Vida and Tilia, who reportedly accepted the supremacy of national peasantist ideology. Maniu was also persuaded during secret meetings with Nitescu, describing his break with Vida as a temporary matter. However, during new talks in November, Vida clarified that he still expected the Piants left to be expelled, and only wanted to absorb the centrists. The FR was still independent of the Piant in December 1937, ahead of the new general election. It registered for this with a new electoral symbol, comprising a rectangle split into solid white and solid black halves. The target was used by all. Samoyla's group, the General Union of Small Industrialists. Before the race, the Piant had signed its own non-aggression pact with the Iron Guard. The FR, having failed in its bid to coalesce with the Guard, ran as an ally of the PNC and the PNL. FR propaganda explained that Vita's ideas had corrected the PNL's stance on various topics, adjusting it to the stringent necessities of life. Such repositioning created a new set of tensions between the FR and the Guardists. In Putna County, a local Vitist was physically assaulted after referring to the Guardists as thieves and criminals, reminding them about the Duca assassination. Another tangible consequence of the PNL pact was that the National Liberals stripped Jews from their electoral lists, on Vita's request. At the time, the Front's anti Semitic discourse became more explicit, with Vita asking that Romania be deloused of its Jews, slated for mass deportation to Mandatory Palestine. Also joining this pact was the Nazi-influenced German party, brought into it by a separate understanding with Vita. The two agreed to run on a nationally oriented platform, against communism. In some respects, the pact was a failure. Vita himself explained to his colleagues that it did not represent a real collaboration, and that the FR agenda remained intact. Although, as Argatoanu writes, the nationalist current was in shambles. Hadiganu and other Transylvanians quit the front, calling it a mockery and a sold over. Upon being reintegrated by the Piant's regional committee, Hadiganu declared Vita to be a great man, but one who errs. As noted by Heinen, the deal was only apparently lucrative for the PNL. The FR had registered significant gains in local elections, but the extra votes came from members of the Guard, as the latter had opted not to put up candidates of its own. Some of the FR's electorate refused to vote for the PNL, and Jewish national liberal supporters were also largely alienated. Demise Following indecisive results, Carroll used his prerogative to call in a PNC minority government, under Goga. This act surprised Vida, who was sure that no explicitly anti-Semitic party would ever be let into government by Carroll. Since he had been overlooked by Carroll, he reportedly resumed his negotiations with Maniu, and proposed himself as chairman of the reunified Piant. In parallel, he agreed to collaborate with the PNC, but asked that he lead the coalition cabinet. This was rejected by Goga. Goga also courted the guard, but was swiftly refused, which led to campaigns of violence on both sides. During its brief period in government, the PNC modified the electoral law to limit representation for smaller parties, hoping to attract the FR into a merger. Vita refused, but Ioannitescu agreed, bringing the entire Old Kingdom sections of the FR under Goga's control. The pact also created tensions within the PNC itself, since it required Goga's followers to also accept reconciliation with Patarka. As a consequence, PNC radicals staged an anti-Patarka riot in Krajowa. 
Goga also changed provisions regarding electoral symbols, assigning each party a number of dots, which were to be the only visual identifier. This became another topic of contention between the Pient, which initially had five points, and the FR, which had four. In January 1938, the Pient newspaper Fackler reported that the Vitist Party had lost all credit with the public, and was morally supporting the PNC. According to the same source, the FR's fripteristi parasites were pressing Vita to accept complete merger. Vita's cooperation with Goga ended abruptly on January 15, when the former withdrew parliamentary support, noting that Goga endangers the true nationalist principles. Eventually, in February, Carroll toppled Goga and set up a government of his choice, under Myron Cristea. Six former FR politicos, beginning with Ioannitescu, became ministers of that cabinet. The FR strategists proposed to Carroll that he outlaw all parties that were not explicitly monarchist. Among their competitors, Kalinescu proposed that these be merged into a single party system. Vida examined the option and remained a skeptic, since he believed Romanians were essentially unruly and too Byzantine to accept discipline and a unified command. In the end, both the FR and PNC were officially subsumed by the National Renaissance Front FRN when Carroll chose in favor of Kalinescu's more dictatorial project. Formal disestablishment came on March 30, 1938. In one of its final manifestos, penned by Nitescu, the FR had noted that Germany could not be trusted to guarantee Romania's borders, and that the old alliances and friendships, including the Little Entente, still worked best for Romania. Nitescu also noted that solving the Jewish question could be done without German intrusion, and that antisemitism was important to the FR only as a facet of its anti-alienism. With the FRN takeover, Tilia became Carroll's ambassador in the United Kingdom, trying to salvage the British-Romanian alliance in the face of German encroachment. During an international incident March 1939, he warned that Germany would invade and carve up Romania. Vitists were still acknowledged as an intermediary group, or distinct FRN faction, during the sham elections of June 1939, though Kalinescu took pains to prevent their interference with the electoral process. Upon validation, Vida became chamber president, helping to pass legislation that introduced protectionism and banned workers' strikes. From January 1940, he was also FRN chairman. In private, he derided this arrangement, noting that, Renaissance, was a misnomer. All the old politicians are today eminences of the front. In contrast to Tilia, Vida accepted Nazi demands and, in 1940, acknowledged the loss of northern Transylvania to Hungary. Almost uniquely among Carroll's advisers, he also recommended a population exchange. The FR's former leadership took different paths during the later stages of World War II. In late 1940, the FRN regime was replaced by the Iron Guard's National Legionary State, which was aligned with Nazism. Tilia refused to return home, and organized a pro-Allied Romanian lobby in London, also reaching out to the point opposition. Vida remained in Romania during the interval. He was arrested after the pro-Allied coup of 1944, and died in March 1950 while under house arrest in Sibiu. By then, Patarka had emerged as a spokesman of the former FR, leading some of its members back into the Pient. During the election of 1946, Mirto was allowed into the communist run bloc of democratic parties, while Patarka became one of its prominent critics. After 1948, a communist regime proceeded to investigate and imprison various other figures associated with the FR. After having returned into Pient ranks, Vlad was arrested and sent to Seget prison, where he died in July 1953. Patarka was tortured and died in similar circumstances the following year. Haitiganu and Severdan were also held at Seget, but both survived. While Buzjugan evaded arrest by going into hiding, Yovapale spent time in Pitesti prison, and died while on probation in 1964. By contrast, his colleague Lepidatescu was promoted to high office within the Securitate, and helped to prosecute national peasantist opponents of the regime. <laughs> Notes